everyone, welcome back. It's me, Vicki, ready for some yoga today. Today we'll be doing a level one and two, kind of a mixed class for students that are, you know, intermediate or maybe some beginners wanting to try something a little bit more, not too advanced today. If you are enjoying my videos, please, you will notice in a few moments the lower corner of your screen will have a little picture of me. Just hover over that and subscribe to my channel so you'll get notice of any new videos that are uh, published. Today we'll be uh, practicing letting go and letting go of our worries, doubts, and fears. And I know we all have them. I have them. If you find yourself up at night a lot and you can't sleep because of your worries, doubts, and fears, or perhaps your anxiety levels are uh, getting a little higher and you feel that in your body, you can't settle down, then this practice will be very helpful. We're going to let go of anything that we can through the practice of yoga, which is a, a perfect way to let go. So we'll be using breath to movement connection, moving the body around, making space in the body so that we can just let go of our worries, doubts, and fears. Let's start class by inhaling the arms up, perhaps looking up to the sky and exhaling them down into the heart center, pausing there with the head bowed, taking three or four breaths, let the first breath let go of worries. They're in the future. We can't do anything about something that hasn't happened yet. Let the next breath let go of any doubts that you have. This yoga practice will help build confidence. And the next exhale, let go of any fears that you have, knowing that these tools that we learn in our practice will help us conquer any fears that we might have and we understand that most are simply all in our minds. One more breath. Good, and we can release the arms and slowly make our way to child pose. As we're making our way to child pose, I want to remind you that this particular practice the Shavasana will not be fully on screen, so you may want to be close to your device so that you can mute it or turn it off so that you can enjoy a longer Shavasana than what you will see on screen today. Let's relax back, hips to heels, arms extended, forehead to the ground. Again, taking three breaths and let the first exhale Release worry. Let the second exhale release doubt. Let the third exhale release fears. One more nice cleansing breath here. And slowly, when you're ready, let yourself float up to table posture. Hips over knees, shoulders over the hands and wrists. Hands wide on your mat like starfish with space between your fingers. Let's inhale to cow pose. Opening the heart. Relaxing the shoulders. Exhale to your cat. As the back rounds, the head drops slightly. Inhale to cow, and we'll start our flow of cow and cat, exhaling to cat. Taking your time. I invite you here to simply close your eyes. Let go of anything that's bothering you today or maybe something that came up was it a worry was it a doubt was it a fear 
Just letting it go. Knowing that the longer we keep it hovering in our mind, the longer it presents itself. So allow the exhales and inhales just to move it away from your attention now. Keeping attention to breath and movement, this beautiful body moving on the mat. Let's move through one more cow and cat. Then slowly back to just a neutral spine here, extending your right leg long behind your toes down and heel pushes out to your back wall. Now a little effort here as we bend the knee and bring it towards the shoulder. Let's do a little flow of that. Bring the leg back and then inhale it forward, knee to shoulder. Exhale, release back. Inhale, knee to shoulder. Doesn't have to touch. Exhale. On the last one, hold your knee into the shoulder and just reverse circle your knee a little bit to get into that hip and loosen that up again. Sometimes we hold our worries and fears there in the hips, right? Let's exhale that knee down, extending the left leg long behind you. Pause there. Nice long spine crown forward. As you bend the knee, let's bring it up to the left uh, shoulder and then exhale it back to the long spine, long leg. Inhale it to the shoulder. Exhale it back. Two more times. The inhale to the shoulder. And exhale it back. Now on this one, inhale to the shoulder. Hold there and then reverse circle that knee just a couple of times to loosen up the hip joint. Reverse circling and bringing that knee back down to center. Good, let's exhale, find child pose, relax for a moment, breathe. Letting go, three breaths. Exhale the worry. Exhale the doubt. Exhale the fear. Can we come back up to table? And as soon as you get there, just walk your hands out long in front of you, your arms long. So the heels of your hands might be at the front of your mat. My fingers are actually off my mat. And find puppy pose where the hips stay over the knees, but the heart melts down between the biceps forehead towards ground. Let your shoulders stretch, everything relax. Trust this practice and the power of it to release. On your next breath, carefully walk the hands back to the knees, all the way back to the knees, kneeling mountain. So we're coming up to a full kneel Hips are over knees, arms to our sides. Nice tall body, strong legs and hips. Let's inhale the left arm up and take a bend to the side, stretching to that wall opposite. Coming back down and then inhale the opposite arm up, stretch to the other side and exhale down. Same thing again, inhale, open the ribs. If you'd like, turn the head to the upper arm, allow that shoulder to draw back a little more. Bring some more space into the side of your, your heart and lung there. And then exhale down. One more, opposite side, inhale. Turn the head to the arm if you're able. Shifting the gaze up and slightly back. Shoulder draws back, breathe. Exhale it down, very nice. Now both arms, inhale up, stretch tall. Let's bring both hands to the right.
right hip for a little twist. If you can, shift your gaze all the way back to your toes. So you might feel just a gentle back bend. Try to keep hips over knees. Inhale, arms back up again. Turn the torso and drop them to the other side. Shifting the gaze back to the toes. Good. We'll do one more each side. Inhale up. Spin all the way around. And then bring those arms down. So we always turn from our core center, not from the arms. The arms just come along, right? Inhale up. Turn the torso. And exhale them down. Very nice. Now inhale up. This time, both hands behind the back. Support your lower back while you push your buttock flesh down a little bit. And let yourself melt into a gentle camel. Again, the hips are over the knees. This time, the gaze shifts up. Lots of space between the collarbones, shoulders. Let's come back to center, very nice. And then just go ahead and melt back into that child pose. Beautiful job, great way of letting go. Now one or two of you may skip the next posture. If you'd like to try Thunderbolt Pose, let's walk our hands back to our knees again. This time, come up a little bit so that you can tuck your toes and shift your weight onto the balls of your feet, walking your hands a little bit more back towards your body. Now, if this is too difficult for you, perhaps for some, then come back down onto your knees or even to Child Pose. If you think you'd like to stay here for a moment, or if you think you can, and bring the hands to heart, pause right there. Breathe. Letting go of worries and doubts and fears. Know that we are strong, we are confident. Let's exhale the fingers down, very nice. Walking the hands back out. We're back in child pose. Let those toes relax down. Just sink those toes and tops of the feet into the mat. Arms out in front of you. Let's flow the body a little bit if you're able. Arms out in front. Inhale. Come forward to a knee down plank. Exhale. Lower a little bit until you can drop your hips. And then find a little cobra pose, opening the heart. Exhaling back to child pose. And we'll do option one or two more, if you'd like. So inhale, come forward to the knee down plank. Exhale down. Inhale to your cobra. Exhale to your child pose. Oh, perhaps one more. Maybe, maybe not, right? It's just yoga, it doesn't matter. If you do or not, it's all good, right? We're still moving with breath and that's the important thing. Exhaling back, release and relax. Very nice, beautiful. Coming back to tabletop posture, tuck your toes, downward facing dog. So you may need to adjust your hands here as you move into this downward facing dog. And again, pedaling the legs, the feet, bending opposite knees one at a time is, is always beneficial. Noticing what muscles in your body stretch as a result of doing this, right? So really feel what's going on in the body here. Now, if you're able, let's pause here, drawing the heels down, right? And your hips are lifting up at the same time. So it's as if you have almost like a rubber band from the back of your legs, from your sitting bones, which is the back of your pelvis, to your heels. 
And then you're making that rubber band a little longer by pushing the heels down and trying to lift the hips up. Right. Let's take one more breath. Very nice. Now slowly from there, we'll walk the feet to the hands, or you can take a big step there if you'd like to. Forward fold at the front of your mat. Relax here. Let yourself melt. Maybe even shake the head a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then Reversing a swan dive with soft knees will rise to standing. Feel free to bring your arms overhead. Stay as tall as you can. If it will feel good, take a little back bend here. Lifting the gaze, the heart up, and the arms around and back to our heart center. Good. So, let's do some half sun salutations together. Those are always nice to let go. So we'll do three of them today. On the first sun salutation, we'll let go of worry. So let's drop the arms, inhale up, exhale, swan dive to forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway up, exhale to forward fold. Inhale, reverse your swan dive and rise. Take that little back bend if you'd like. Bring the arms around, back to the heart. On the second one, we'll let go of all doubts. Dropping the arms, inhaling up. Exhale, swan dive. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, release back to fold. Inhale, rise. Lifting the heart up, here's that back bend. Arms around, back to the heart. And on the last one, we'll let go of fear. Dropping the arms, inhale up, exhale, swan dive. Lifting halfway, and exhale, release down. Inhale, rise, smile on the face, lift the heart, little back bend, arms around, back to the heart center. Nice. Take a few breaths, see how you feel. Maybe already, just in this short time, you feel as if you've maybe just let go of something, and that's what we love about yoga. So we have a little bit of work to do, and we're working a little bit on balance today. So let's, let's uh, pay attention here to that by shifting the weight to the right foot. We'll lift the left heel. So we'll drop the arms to mountain. Now we'll take the left foot stepping back to warrior one. So that left foot's gonna have to come flat on the mat, right? Front leg is bent. Breathe, incorporate your back muscles here. On your next breath, let's bring the arms around. Now we're stepping back to the front of our mat to chair pose. Good, let's try that again. Stay here, stepping left leg back to warrior one. Hang on, arms around, back to chair. Inhale again, warrior one, left foot back. Arms around, back to chair. Last one, warrior one, hold. Just stay right there, breathe. Find the rooting of your feet as you open to warrior two. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Give the pose a few moments to absorb in the body the benefits of what we're doing. Full breath, strong legs, Front knee tracking towards front pinky toe. Hips open, good. Let's reverse the warrior, now keeping the same legs. Inhale. Finding reverse 
triangle. That means we have to straighten the front leg, that's all. Stay right there. Now let's bring that front arm forward. We're coming into full triangle, reach forward, and then shift the arms and pause right there. Some will shift the gaze up if you feel comfortable doing that. Taking two breaths. On your next inhale, lift up and back to warrior two. Good. Now if you'd like to try half moon balance here, this front arm is gonna reach down towards the ground in front of your front foot. The back leg can just drag forward and stay on the mat, or it can lift in the air if you'd like. The opposite arm can reach up. A challenging little balance, right? Good. Now from wherever you are, the next posture is going to be forward folding. So with that upper arms in the air, go ahead and bring it down. Just turn the hips and lower the front leg down. You can bend it a little bit to bring it down there. Relax in your fold. Let go. Big movement there. Now hang on, bend your knees, shift your hips back. Find chair pose again, option to bring the arms out in front for a little more sensation. Right? Breathe, breathe, breathe. Power your legs up all the way to standing mountain, little back bend. In joyfulness, right? Arms around and back to the heart. Take a few breaths. Nice job. So let's try this on the other side. The left foot will ground, the right heel will lift, mountain arms. We're preparing to step back with our right foot to warrior one. So whenever you're ready, step on back with that right foot, find warrior one. Again, nice long back leg, incorporate all the muscles that you need to hold the pose. Whatever muscles aren't being used, relax them. Maybe your jaw, your neck muscles a little bit. Pinky fingers. Let's bring the arms around. We're stepping to chair pose. Take your time. Make any adjustment that you need. Now once again, right leg back, warrior one. Arms around, back to chair pose. Right leg back, warrior one. Arms back around to chair pose. Right leg back, warrior one. Arms around to chair pose. We have one more, it's the holding one. So right leg back, warrior one. Mm -hmm. Now turn to warrior two. Mm -hmm. So my back will be facing you for just a moment. Breathe again, take a few breaths. Allow the benefits of the pose to be absorbed in the body. Crown is lifted, rib cage lifted away from hips. Feet strongly rooted. Let's drop the back arm, inhale, reverse the warrior. Same leg, now stay right here. On your next breath, reverse triangle. So just straightening that front leg. Nothing else changes. We move into full triangle. Take that front arm forward until you can't reach anymore. And then shift the arms. Triangle pose. Stabilize your back leg, your back ankle, your back hip. Good. On your next breath, inhale, reach up to the sky, back to warrior two. Again, you can stay here, or if 
you want a little bit more in your practice, try your half moon balance. You can drag or step your back foot in as your front arm comes to the ground. Pause. Breathe. And again, that back leg can be lifted, flexed foot, or it can be on the ground. Now we're shifting to the forward fold. Be mindful, the hip position is changing to face hip pointer bones down. And then slowly with a soft knee, bring that right leg down. Find forward fold. Relax, relax, relax. Little extra work, bend your knees, chair pose, shift the hips back, arms can come out in front a little bit more now, hang on. There's always a little work involved in practice, right? It's all part of our practice. Power the legs up, little back bend. Now stay right here. If, you're, if your back bend is pretty big, it's pretty huge back bend, can you bring it back just to neutral spine? And then we'll bring the arms down and behind us. Clasp your hands together here. If it doesn't reach for you, you can just put your fists on either side of your spine. Let's lift the heart again, right? Hip shift forward, another camel pose here. So your knuckles are drawing down towards the ground. Take two breaths. And as you come back to neutral spine, leave the arms behind you, bend your knees, forward fold, and let go of all worries and doubts and fears. If you'd like, just go ahead and lift those arms up off of your back, relax, 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 let it all go. So our hands will unclasp and come to the ground. Again, in your fold, if you'd like to, you can shake your head a little bit. If it feels good for you at this juncture of practice, let your hands leave the mat and grab your elbows. Put your head inside that little cradle of elbows and arms and just sway a little bit side to side. Know that you are okay. Nothing to worry about. We have no control over anything, right? Nothing to doubt. We all have confidence very deep inside. We just have to pull it out. Nothing to fear, except for the word fear, right? It's all in our mind. Let it go. Fingers to the ground at your own pace, stepping back to downward facing dog. No rush. Let's really stretch that out. Really, really stretch out. Now, if you feel that your back has to move in flow, if you are feeling that, or maybe you often do a flowing type of practice, then join me in just taking another flow of that little vinyasa by shifting forward to kneeling plank, exhaling to low plank, inhaling to cobra, and then just exhale to child pose. Meet me back in Downward Dog whenever you feel that you're ready to do so. There's no rush. So we're coming into a super big stretch now. We should feel warm enough. There is some effort to enter the stretch. So let's see if we can lift the right leg to three-legged dog. Bend the knee and fan the hip open to the side. So we're, again, we're getting more into the hip now. Hips and legs, lower back. Let's bring it back to three-legged dog. Then bend the knee. See if you can bring your foot 
outside your right hand onto the ground next to the hand. Put the heel on the mat and the toes off the mat. Drop your back knee down to lizard. Then pause just right there and see how that all works. Mm -hmm. Make any adjustment that you need. If you're able, pick your right hand up, slide it underneath the right shin, and it's going to be on the floor right next to your foot. So this makes a little cradle for your leg. Right? So if you want to, and if that hip feels like it can take a little more, expose the side of your, the, I'm sorry, the sole of your foot, and just let that, um, that leg just kind of rest in that cradle of your arm for a minute as support there. There might be someone watching here who is feeling like you want to lower down to your left forearm. If you want to do that, you can. A lot of different bodies, right? <laughs> so I'm dealing with a lot of viewers, a lot of different bodies. If your body's going here, then that's okay, right? But we never want to force anything. So let's see if we can keep the head up a little bit. At least the chin is off the chest and the gaze slightly forward. All right, now we need to stay here for three more breaths. <laughs> and you know what to do on each exhale. Let it go, right? Let it go. And let it go. Uh, if there's anyone that went down on the forearm here, you'll have to unfeed your right hand first and put it on the mat to push yourself back up to hands. Let's put the right foot down flat. Walk the left knee back a little bit so that you can find tabletop. Slide the right leg back and then just shift the hips side to side in your table. Or you can even make little tiny circles. Just move them around a little bit from, from that super big lizard stretch. Mm -hmm. Just moving. All right, so downward facing dog is our next posture, using that posture as an entrance to the opposite side lizard. So take a moment to stretch this. Now remember that rubber band I was talking about earlier. Heels down, hips lifted. Stretch that long, tight rubber band out a little bit. The rubber band to the back of the legs. <laughs> Good. When you're ready, Lift your left leg to three-legged dog, and we'll bend the knee and fan open to the side. Mm -hmm. Then we'll bring this back to three-legged dog, and when you're ready, bend the knee, place the foot outside the left hand. Drop your right knee to the ground and place the foot flat, toes flat. So your left toes are facing they're hanging off the mat, basically. The heel is on. Mm -hmm. You can move your right knee back more if you can take more stretch. Let's pick up this left hand, feet it under the left shin. There's your cradle if you want more hip opening. So, you can expose the sole of the left foot and let that, that leg kind of fall into that forearm for support there. It's very effective, very safe. Mm -hmm. Final option is that right forearm for some. Chin off the chest, let the head be neutral. The gaze is somewhat forward. Relax, 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 relax. I know it's hard to do in this shape, but try to relax something, even if it's your big toe on your left foot. Three more breaths, and you know what to let go of, right? I'm not even going to name it. 
Let go. Let go. Letting go. If you are on your forearm, unfeed your left hand and put it down in front of your face so that you can press up to hands first, then put your left foot flat. We need to walk the right foot up just a little bit so we can find our table posture, then sway side to side. Side to side, or again, you can make those little hip circles if you'd like to, just moving around a little bit. We will all meet in child pose when you're ready. Coming back down to earth. Relax here. There are multiple ways to find a seated posture. Many students cross the feet from child and just walk their hands back and roll on back to a seat. But you can get to a seat any way you'd like. We're coming to a straddle seat today. And in straddle seat, a reminder to flex your feet. That means the toes draw back towards your shins and the heels press out, again, to elongate that long back of the leg. So we're sitting tall. We're relaxing our shoulders. Take a couple of breaths here. See how this shape feels on your legs and your sitting bones, which are the two bones at the base of your pelvis, are anchored into the ground right now. All right, let's inhale and exhale. Bring the heart forward. So you're hinging from your hips. Your hands can come to the ground if you'd like. And then just Pause there, bring the heart as far forward as you can until you reach your stopping point. It's almost as if you're looking for something way far on the ground in front of your legs, in front of your mat. If your hip hinge is so deep that your chest ends up on the ground, that's fine. It's not an ultimate goal, but of course some bodies are going to be able to go there, and that's fine. Or if your forearms are down, that's fine too. Or maybe you feel like you just have a fingertip on the ground, and that's okay too. Again, the power of this practice will bring us to a different place over time. There's no rush. Baby steps in yoga. Let's take a couple more breaths in our straddle seat. To exit our pose today, we need to draw the belly in, bring the torso back from there, just fingertip walk yourself back up. Good. And then we'll bring the legs together, feet on the ground, tight to the body, hands under the thighs, sit tall, Mm -hmm. So today in our boat pose, our goal today, just for today, is to keep the knees close to the chest. So let's see how we can do that, even if you lift your feet. Can you keep your knees close to your chest? So keep bringing the heart up towards the knees, sitting taller and taller. Doesn't matter how long your legs are or if they're bent, and it doesn't matter if your feet are lifted. Now today, let's bring these arms to reach the sky. So keep the, the knees pulling up towards your heart. Three breaths. Letting go. Letting go. And letting go. And now just put the feet down. Slide them out long. Nice job. In fact, let's extend one and bend the other so that we can roll onto our back. Just kindly 
and softly roll onto your back. And if you need to readjust on your mat, please take this moment to, to readjust. And then once you've readjusted and your whole body is comfortable on the mat, let's bend the knees, feet flat, arms to our sides to prepare for bridge pose. So there's a little space between your legs here. Legs are not splayed out, but they're not touching either. When you're ready, press on the feet, track your knees forward, elongate your thighs, draw your shoulders down to the ground, and lift up. You're lifting up your hips, you're lifting your lower back towards the sky. Imagine the lower part of your back coming up and through your pelvis towards the sky. Strong legs now. Take a few deep breaths. You might even be able to take three or four here. Opening up the lungs, keeping our bodies healthy. Creating space through the ribs, opening the ribs with those inhales. One more. Exiting the pose slowly from the neck down. So push the spine down, even if you have to untuck the shoulders a little bit. Push down, down, down into the ground. All the way down. Then float those knees back into the chest. Good. Let's open our arms to a T. Palms up. Take an inhale here and exhale. Drop the knees and legs to the left. Stack them up there. Let your right shoulder relax down. There might be someone watching here who would like to extend the top leg. If you have that uh, availability in your hip and back to extend that top leg out, you can even put it into your uh, hand there. Just, just do that and it might give you a little bit more. And then we'll turn the head away from the legs just to create that long spiral of diagonal energy flowing through the body from shoulder to hip. Noticing how the body responds to this shape. Two more breaths. Top leg, if it is out long, let's restack it, bring it back, turn the head back to center. Draw the belly center in as you float the knees back to center. Take a full breath there. Let your low back hug the mat. On your next exhale, drop the legs to the opposite side. Same exact thing, other way. Melt into this. Let the left shoulder snuggle down. Well, of course, that option for that top leg to extend long, maybe towards your hand there. The head can turn to the opposite side, away from the legs. Taking a few breaths here. Letting your whole body ring itself out. Get rid of anything else that's troubling or bothersome. Knowing it's all just temporary. Just one more breath here. And then if your top leg is long, restack it. Turn the head back to center. Draw the belly in and float those knees back to center, good. From here, let's elevate the legs in the air. You can hold your thighs if you'd like. And keep the feet together as if your legs were up against a wall. Mm -hmm. There 
might be someone watching that can let go here. And then we'll point and flex the feet. You can even circle them a little bit. Circle your, your ankles, your feet. Point and flex. Grounding the lower back. And then as you bring those feet to stillness, can we bend the knees? We're going to bring the hands out to try to reach the shins or the feet as we bring the soles of the feet together. If that works for you, you can hold the outside of the foot and then draw your knees outward towards your uh, opposite wall. So you're pushing the knees away from the heart center towards the wall in front of you. And at the same time, if you want to, you can soften your elbows and bring the feet towards your heart. So knees away, feet towards. Take a couple of breaths in our supine assisted butterfly shape. Two more. Exhale and slowly back off that stretch. Let the feet float to the ground. And then one by one, elongate the legs to the opposite corners of your mat. As you situate yourself for your Shavasana, arms to your sides, as I said before, you may want to mute or even turn off your device here, or you can stay with it as you close your eyes and find your comfortable rest, your surrender. Know that the work you did today was very powerful in letting go of anything at all. Trust in your yoga practice as you move forward with today, with tomorrow, with this week. As you move forward and maneuver through your world, trust your practice to help you to let go. Thank you for joining me today and namaste to all of you.